Troubleshooting and mid-market M11 Ultra Clave. <sighs> Unit comes in, take a look on the outside, pop the side panel because how else am I gonna put the gauge on? And then as long as the chamber's empty, what I'd like to do is pop down to this panel here because, because more often than not, I find issues down here with the overheating. These are overtemp thermostats. This is the bottom of your heating element. Some knucklehead used to use a torque wrench and either had no idea how to use it or just way out of spec, but these are always coming back in loose. So make sure these are tight. There's no leak. I'm no moving here. No leak here. Look on the plate for signs of water residue, which would indicate a water leak. Nothing, so that looks solid. No discoloration from heat damage, so bottom is fine. We can flip this back over. Actually, before we flip it over, we just do a quick check of the heating out, make sure it, see the resistance level is. Because why not? I'm in the depot, we can spend a little extra time here. Let's uh, check everything, do it right. So for those who don't know, there's your multimeter. We're gonna check ohms or resistance. So this is your ohms resistance setting. This little thing means you can make it audible. Don't have to. If you're checking for continuity, and you don't have to look at the screen, you set it to audible. And when you touch your contacts, you can make that sound so you know you have continuity. We're just checking resistance, so I don't really care about that. But before we go reading, we need to know what we're looking for here. So we need to know, is this a 110 unit or a 220 unit? This is a 110. So we're hoping for about 10, 11 ohms for our resistance. I'll be, so we just touch our leads to the heating element contact, and then we look at our screen. Let me do my screen, I'll do this. And we are 11, 3, so we're good. Nothing wrong with our heating element. One less thing to worry about, and it's troubleshooting. And on the mid mark, there's not a lot to electronically. I mean, this is your main board. The only other board is your display board. But you'll see visual issues up there if that's a problem. So next up is looking through our ch chamber, see if we've got any issues here. That's not sitting. Clips are okay. Pull this whole rack out. I like to keep everything together. Just gonna wander off. Alright. A little dirty, but otherwise looks fine. No issues in here. Alright. Put your gauge pressure gauge on. Because there's no point in running a cycle without a pressure gauge to verify. It's Otherwise, you would run it, find the error, and then later on have to go back to, you know, check pressure. You can skip a step by combining them this way. It makes it quicker and easier. If you remember from our earlier video, how to plug things in. Outlet. Plug. Yeah. But, as I found many calls throughout my career history, you have to sometimes explain to people that the other end also has to be plugged into the device. Can't tell you how many times that's come up. Now we're plugged in. And look, no power. All right. Well, now we have a first issue. How are we going to check this? I could sit here and go through 30 million things, fuses, but first let's see if we even have power coming in because we just had a blackout on the entire block of this depot. So let's get our meter, check the out, see if we got power. And there we are, there's no power. So, hot to ground, millivolts, so go check the breaker. All right, so I checked the breaker, still without power. <laughs> Sometimes, scratch that, very often we use the KISS principle, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. I checked the breaker, breaker's good, I flipped it anyway, but, dun dun dun, we can see that, plug is half out. And now we has power. All right, uh, as we were. So, we're gonna verify. Oh, I don't even have water in the unit, so let's add some water so we can test it. All right, now we have water. So this tube here is double duty. It is our sight tube. Tells us how much water is in the reservoir. We are now in the green, so we have enough. It's also your drain tube. When it's time to drain the sterilizer, just pull it from these clips, pour it, you know, and point it down to something, and it will drain out. I'll show you that later. For now, put it back in there. It doesn't sit right, or your clips are broken. It will lean over and touch the door. and have heat damage, and then, well, can't see through it when it's black. So, let's verify we have water coming in. We're gonna hold down our door switch and start a cycle. This is your door switch. This clicky down here, it's a micro switch. Push down by the pin in the door. 
that guy. Let's the unit know the door is closed so you can start a cycle. <clears throat> Filling chamber, water coming in. Once you've verified water is pouring in, close the door. Now there's two things to remember here. A, we're testing to make sure water is getting from our reservoir through our fill valve into the chamber, but you also have the door closed, not just because the machine will not run, uh, will not allow you to do anything with the door closed, but also because we're testing out a bellows or air outlet solenoid. So you can't see it back there, but I'll show you later. Um, maybe I can show you a different unit. Yeah, so here's another unit I've opened. This is your air out solenoid. So this stays open while the unit is filling. Now, if you know anything about physics, you'll know that we have a sealed container, it's full of air. You can't put water or any other medium in there unless you can remove the air. So that air outlet solenoid is held open during the filling process uh, through this vent solenoid down here. So the air can escape while water goes in. Once it's done, it will close. And then we start the heat up process. Now mid-mark unit, its process for removing the air from the chamber is that during heat up, it will open that air outlet solenoid three times at specified uh, temperature ranges, it will open, allow the steam to push out any of the air there, then it'll close, continue heating, creating more steam, open again, and it'll do that a total of three times, and the Midmark engineers have decided that three of those purge cycles uh, is enough to remove all air from the chamber, so there's nothing but steam. Because if we have air in our chamber, that means we have an air pocket, which means we have an area inside the unit that will not be sterile because that area will not have a steam medium, it will not reach 273 degrees, and you have to be at least 212 for sterilization to work. Uh, I can explain that another time. So this is the mid-mark process. Other sterilizer manufacturers do it differently. Some, like Tuttenauer, will keep their, that solenoid open until the temperature reaches 212, and then it will close it because they've decided at that point all air is purged from it. So. It's the same process, just two different ways of doing it. You know, don't mix it up with a prevac, which actually has pulses, so it's actually sucking the air out and having steam come in. Um, it's very different. Those are on-demand units. Do another video. So here we are heating up. Now this pressure is not realistic because we still have air in the unit, but. And as you see, I'm not showing any pressure here. This could mean bad pressure sensor, bad temperature sensor, dirty temperature sensor, or it just means we have an air pocket there. So don't worry about that too much. After the third purge cycle, that's when your temperature and pressure correlation should be perfect and your gauge that you've attached, that little blue guy, will match what's up here. So now the issue with this autoclave, as our work order says, is customer states unit has steam error. Now, when the cycle's over, we can go check it, but on newer mid-mark units, there's no calibration for this. They've taken those pots or potentiometers away, so the board either works or it's trash. Anyway, to get into service mode, first switch on your dip switch here. Put you in service mode after a power cycle. So I can do that now, it's not gonna do anything. When the unit is all done and I shut power off and then turn it back on, we'll be in, we'll be in service mode and I can check error codes. Uh, should have done that beforehand. Oops, my bad. Anyway, let's run and see what happens. Okay, there's our error. Boom, heat up mode, steam temp over limit. And so just limit switches down there. I guess we should have tested those out too. But more than likely, you barely got anything. Uh, could be a bad temp sensor. Could be a bad over limit switch. Let's dig in. All right, now here's the service manual. I'll show you how things work. It's easier than just pointing at random things. They have these nice, Midmark has nice diagrams. So you see everything that's involved in this. So this is heat up mode. So here's your reservoir. This is your condensing coil. Here's your air outlet solenoid, as I was telling you before. Here is your vent valve and fill valve, and you see fill valve is not mentioned because it's not used during heat up mode, it's closed. Vent valve is getting power to stay closed because it's a normally open solenoid. Air vent solenoid is intermittently open and closed. There's your main board, pressure sensor on the board, heating element, 
water in the chamber, and you see everything else in vase. Temperature sensor, so it does get dirty sometimes, heating element, all that good stuff. There's a nice little description of each one of these, what each component is doing during a heat up mode. Heating element, vent valve, air valve, temperature sensor, pressure sensor, as I said. And here's a list of things to check for C500 series of codes. So we were C573. So it kind of gives you an idea of what to look at. Is this unit level? If the unit's not level, you will have too much water. Okay? It is pitched, no, oh, I'm sorry, you have too little water. It is pitched in a certain, at a certain angle so that it controls how much water is actually in the chamber. Because too much water or too little water give you all kinds of temperature, pressure, sensor errors. Um, pressure leaks. Look for water underneath your door. If there's a pressure leak there, you're never going to build pressure, and boom, there's your issue right there. So check your door gasket. Uh, you know, During the cycle, you can check to see if those valves that I said before that should be uh, energized are energized or not. Or maybe there's a leak in one of them. You know, a little bit of debris gets in there somehow. Something's breaking down. Uh, temperature sensor, make sure that's reading correctly. If it's dirty or failing, water level sensor. Maybe there's too much water, but if your water level sensor's not working, then you either have no water or too much water because it'll just keep filling and filling and filling until it said, you know, too much or you ran out of water. Or it would start the cycle immediately without any water in the chamber. Chamber filter, there's a little mesh screens that are in there. Keep debris from going into the reservoir, which would cause those issues in those solenoids. Heating element, we've already checked that. And after all that, everything else is good, you may have a board issue because it's reading the pressure and temperature uh, incorrectly. And I told you there's no calibration, you just have to replace that board. Now I get past an error code and it says unplug, replug unit. Remember I told you when we unplug, we are going to be in service mode. So unplug, count one, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one. That's enough for capacitors to be de-energized. And Ran in the relay, relay? No, random access memory to be cleared. Now, <clears throat> let's go to our service mode. There you go. Start, recall errors, stop, and 573382, same 573s. So, this has been a running issue for a while. Let's clear this. And now we're in the testing. Did I explain what a C573 is? Over temp, it means at some point it got too hot and the over limit switch in the bottom, which is just, if you picture like two pieces of metal, as they heat, the metal actually flexes and breaks connection. Same as turning off a switch or cutting a wire in a circuit. Now there's no power going through, so it cuts power. That would be the error. Once it cools off enough, the metal touches again and you complete the circuit and you have power. So let's run again short cycle and see if we're leaking water from the front. Hear that? That is the air vent solenoid opening up and allowing steam to escape from, well, air really to escape from the chamber back to the reservoir. That is a normal sound you should be hearing. Remember we did it three times. So this time around I watched it and I could see the temperature was way higher than what it actually is because you cannot have pressure without temperature, and you're not getting to that level of temperature without having pressure. And even though it said I had something like 6 PSI, this zero never moved, because we had no pressure. So a dirty temperature sensor would read low, uh, so we would get more pressure than we are reading temperature. Here, however, we're getting, more we're getting a higher temperature with no pressure. So this could be a bad temperature sensor. Uh, again, this could be a leak, but I'm not really seeing anything, so I'm doubting a leak. Um, I'm also not hearing bubbles or anything in the reservoir, so all that should be working okay. So we're going to check the temp sensor. No, I checked the temp sensor. Temp sensor is good. <sighs> this is the air outlet valve. So disconnecting here will tell me if either my air outlet solenoid is leaking, which it's not, or my vent solenoid is leaking. So this water shooting out here, that's my leak. There's something keeping our air vent solenoid open. So we're going to check to see if it's energized, and then we're going to take it apart. It is not energized. All right, you can just put some iron-based, i.e. something that is ferrous or attracted by a magnet, to the top of solenoid, and you'll see if it's on there or not. Or you can also get a clamp meter, put that on here, 
40 it's a volt meter to check voltage, but look, I have no current running through it, so it is not energized, so it should be. And now that is where it's open, I'm shooting out steam. So it's now. Here's your vent cylinder, we're gonna pull this apart. So, pipe comes off, this top piece comes off, nut comes off. It's not gonna be this simple, I just took all this apart and I just smacked it back together just to show you the order. Here is the stem of your solenoid. For Minimax, we have a tool specifically for this called a spanner wrench. RPI makes this, this the part number, and I wanna write that down. It's two different spanner wrenches, one, a little wider, a little smaller. This is made to just slide right over the stem into those little holes, and then you can take it off. And it's going to stick. So the idea with this is you can take a screwdriver to these holes to get some extra torque. Don't go crazy. Make sure you're sitting firmly, or you will break the pins. Now, there's our vent solenoid. So, I'm got some heat. So, in the solenoid, you have your stem, this is the plunger, this moves up and down. This other piece is just a magnetic coil. It energizes, becomes, creates a magnetic field which pulls this plunger up into a stem. That's, you know, sometimes it opens it, sometimes it closes it. Remember, we said the air outlet solenoid is a normally open. So, so it's using it to either push down or the holes or elsewhere. Anyway. That's so already assembled, we're doing filling. Let's see if this one has the same leak or not. All right, so we're heating. Nothing is coming out of the pipe right now. So that is a good sign. So, so the old plunger. Heat damage is clearly leaking out. I'm not making a good sit. See, so also replace the plunger and stem. Far so good, no complaints here. Good. Already passed where we were before. There it is. We can solenoid. That's old. Heat damage. Was making a good seal on the stem. Doesn't help. And so this insulation falls in here. By the way, this you should not touch by hand. It's usually fiberglass. It's like little microscopic, you know, like tiny, tiny slivers of glass. You don't want that in your skin. I have like asbestos hands. So it's not a big deal for me, but I don't suggest the rest of you doing that. You also want to be careful if you're touching that shit. Do not touch your face or anybody else or anything else. All right, so that's it, kids. It's just a leaking vent valve. All right, good luck out there.